Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you about the precision limiter on the Behringer Wing. Now, if you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear, no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, my last week's video was teaching you all about setting up a stream feed. So a stream feed that was on my matrix, and this time I'm going to be using my main left right one as my band. So I'm going to call this band. And then if we go over to my main two, that's my speaking. Now, if we remember from last week's video, we have set up a stream bus on our matrix feed. So we can see on matrix two, I have my stream. And if we go over to my band, and we look at the sends. So we're sending at zero dB, so unity gain to my PA, but negative 10 to my stream. And then on my speaking bus, we have my main PA being sent to at zero and my stream bus being sent at positive five. Now, why is this? Well, this was to overcome the level difference that we have between a music portion of a service or an event and the speaking portion of a service or event. In the main room, you want to have that decibel difference. So we would be normally listening to music up in the 80 to 90, maybe even 100 dB levels, whereas the voice portion of our event or service, we would want to have a little bit quieter. So down in the 70 to maybe 75 dB, about the volume of a normal conversation. Now, that doesn't play well for an online stream because we're wanting to have this really mastered loud volume. So if you end up having your stream feed set up where you have your band all the way up at zero and then your speaking is 15 decibels quieter, well, that's a big difference on stream. And then if you compensate and turn everything up, now your band is going to be distorting, except your voice speaking is going to be perfect. So in my last video, I was showing you how to separate these two gain discrepancies on our stream bus. But I was wanting to, to show you today how to take this even one step farther by utilizing the precision limiter, which is built in the effects section of the Behringer Wing. So to navigate and find this, we can go to our effects section and we need to choose what effects rack we're gonna be using. So I'm actually going to utilize effects 15. So I'm going to select my matrix two, go to home, and I'm going to insert this right here. And then we will go and select our matrix 15 and we will turn it on. And then we will go and select our precision limiter. Now, one thing to note about this is it does add a slight amount of latency and that's 1.75 milliseconds. So just keep that in mind. It's honestly not that much added milliseconds or added latency to this, but if you're needing to time align two things and you place one through an effects rack with a precision limiter, you will need to do the same thing with something else that's needing to match up with that. So just keep that in mind. But since our matrix two is a stereo channel, we can just run it through our precision limiter and it will be fine. Now, as we are looking at our precision limiter, we have six different adjustments down here on the bottom, as well as a touch button right here. So when you first set this up, my recommendation is to turn off auto gain. And that way you can control the amount of added volume that this is going to create. So when we are setting this up, this is our input gain or how loud we want to make our volume going into this precision limiter. Now the benefit of this is we can crank the gain up a lot and then we can set our output gain to basically make it so that our volume on the outside of this precision limiter won't ever go above a certain dB level. And in that case, my output gain right here is currently set to negative 0.5 dB, which I'm going to adjust this to be negative one dB. Now, the next thing that we have is our squeeze. Now our squeeze is an adjustment inside this effect that will basically get a little bit more volume out of the, our stream. Now, when I have been using this, I find that setting this to a setting of 40 makes a very big difference. And we can listen to that here in a second. 
Our next segment that we have is our attack. Now this is just like a compressor, so our attack and release times are here for us to set. If we have a faster attack time, this is going to clamp down on the initial peak of a piece of volume that's coming through this. If we slow this down, and it doesn't get very slow, but it goes up to one millisecond in our attack time. If we slow this down, then this is going to let a few peaks through before it clamps down. Likewise, our release time can go anywhere from 20 milliseconds all the way up to two seconds long. Now, when I'm setting my attack and release times, I'm usually in the 0.4 millisecond on attack, and my release will range anywhere from 90 to about 190 milliseconds, with the sweet spot being about 132. I find with most musical material, this is going to be a great setting. Now, our knee is an adjustment that allows us to create either a hard knee or a soft knee. Now, a soft knee makes it so that the compressor will start compressing gradually as the volume is increasing closer up towards that threshold point. Now, we don't see that we have a threshold setting on this. This is our input gain, which we can increase the volume of the channel going into this. So this is a fixed threshold setting. But we can adjust this, and this goes anywhere from 10 dB all the way to 0 dB, with a happy setting probably in the 3 to 4 dB. Now, it doesn't say dB, but I just want to mention that the knee setting is in decibels. So if we want to have a softer slope, we would want to have this at a higher adjustment. So the next thing that I'm going to do is play some music through this so we can actually get this dialed in. Now one thing to mention about my mastering settings for YouTube, for you guys to be able to watch this video, I do have to do some compression and mastering in post-production, so you might not be getting the full experience as if you were listening on the XLR on the back of this board. Now I will overemphasize some of these settings so you can hear it on stream, but some of the nuances of what I'm hearing here in the studio are going to be slightly different than what you're hearing on your end on YouTube. So, so let's go ahead and play some music. Now, as we can see, my stream bus is down at the negative 18 point where this is up at the positive or the negative six point. And that again is because we are sending lower level to our stream bus to overcome that volume to speech discrepancy that's happening in the room versus on stream. So let's go to our stream bus and start adjusting our input gain up. Now, we can see that there is a lot of compression that's happening there. Now, while this would be peaking now, while this would normally be way too much, we can see how much gain we can actually get out of this. So if I set this to a more normal level of 13, let's try the squeeze. So I'll turn the squeeze down. adjust our output gain down, that will actually turn down our level. So what I want to do real quick is I'm going to solo up my main PA and play this music and talk into this microphone at about the same level that I would be if the music was playing in the room and then someone came out and talked on this microphone. Now I have this microphone coming in here on 25 right here. So let's go ahead and try that.
hey, check, check. So this is the volume level that it would be, which you can't hear, but in room, this is about right. I can turn it up a little bit more, but this is really quiet and I can barely hear it in my ears and I'm assuming you can't really hear it on your end, but let's try this with the stream. Now, like I was saying, you could barely hear me because I was talking pretty loudly into that microphone. In the room, it sounds great. The volume of the band was great, and then the speech came in about 75 dB, but online, that wouldn't work. So now let's give it a listen with the stream bus. Hey, so we can notice that this is a perfect volume for stream. However, this is still the quieter volume in room. This is just for stream that is being turned up this much. And our compressor is uh, doing a little bit, if I get really loud, we can see that it will compress just a little bit when I say really loud, when I really yell into this. Again, this is for our online feed. So the benefit of having this is that our band is coming into this at a pretty even volume being turned down, and then our speaking is being turned up and about the same volume as the band for the online stream. But in room, again, it sounds natural, but online, it again sounds natural because online needs this mastered level of having our speech and our music and everything contained in this nice little package. Now there's some other things that you can do with your online stream, including some EQ adjustment, maybe an equal loudness curve, if you will, and basically boost the lows, cut some of the mids and increase some of the high end. And that would translate to a laptop that's listening to this mix at a lower level and make it sound like it does in room. I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you do happen to have any questions, make sure you put that down below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I would make on the Behringer Wing or really any of the other things that are out there, please put that in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com where I have a whole bunch of articles, tips, and tricks also, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would ask that you would be. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day.